Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. In today's video, I'll be using Paper Rose Studios Mediterranean Summer Collection. I have their 6x6 paper pad, and this collection is also available in the 12x12 size. So if you prefer the larger size, that is available. And I will have links provided in the description box below. I'll flip through this quickly so you can get an idea of all the beautiful patterns that are included. There are a total of 18 double-sided pattern papers, three each of 12 designs. Several of the designs do have some cut-apart images, but for my cards, I won't be using any of the cut-aparts from the paper pad. I love the colors and the beautiful floral designs in this collection. There are also several sheets that have a watercolor looking background, and those work nicely with the busier floral patterns. To work along with the paper pad, there is the die cut pack. There are four sheets included, lots of beautiful images, and also several sentiments. And these simply punch out. I really like that Paper Rose now has coordinating die cut packs. Sometimes I'll pick up two of the die cut packs since I like to make multiples of the same card. But this time I only have one of the die cut packs. The sentiments included are smile, hello, best wishes, thanks, and two different happy birthdays. Then we have lots and lots of floral blooms, leaves, a couple of pomegranates, and there's even a few little vases. And something new from Paper Rose, they've also released a coordinating collection of embossed cut apart sheets. And this goes perfectly with the Mediterranean Summer Paper Pad. There are four A5 sheets included, and all of the designs have beautiful glossed embossed images. It's really hard to see on camera, so I'm trying to angle the paper so the light picks up that gorgeous gloss. This first design is fun with the four different floral images and the watercolor wash behind them. Here's one with lots of beautiful floral blooms. Look at all that lovely glossy shine. And they do have a slightly raised surface. It's very smooth. This sheet is absolutely stunning. It has a very realistic glass design. And the final sheet has several large floral bouquets. Again, beautiful gloss detail on those flowers and some of the leaves. In this video, I'll be using all three of the items I just showed, the six by six paper pad, the die cut pack, and also the embossed cut apart sheets. So here's a look at all the die cut pieces punched out. And I've also fussy cut out all of the beautiful embossed cut aparts. And yes, it does take a little bit of extra time to fussy cut out all those pieces, but they're so beautiful, it was definitely worth it. For the four larger watercolor background images, two of them I cut out using a stitched oval die, and the other two I simply trim down. Here's a look at all those beautiful vases. And I did leave just a slight white border around all of the images. And now it's time to move on to my cards. For card design number one, I will be using a card sketch for inspiration. This is from MFT, it's number 635. And if you are interested in any of the sketches I use in this video, I share all of that information on my coordinating blog post. That link is provided in the description box below, or you can simply head over to christymarcotte.com. For this first card, I selected a lovely pink watercolor paper for the background and also the design that had a full bouquet all over it. I cut out both of those pieces using a stitched rectangle die from Paper Rose, and I'm adding just a corner of that floral paper toward the top of the card, following the design on the card sketch. I put adhesive on the back, adhered it to the top of the card, then simply flipped over the panel to trim off the extra. I layered the background on a burgundy cardstock color, Put some ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. All of my cards in this video are American Standard A2 size, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. 
At the bottom of the card, I'm adding a strip of floral pattern paper and also a narrow strip of the purple watercolor paper. I'll add one of the die cut pieces and I did put foam dimension on the back side. For the sentiment, this is another embossed die cut pack from Paper Rose. It's their Bright Days Ahead sentiment. I selected Happy Birthday and I did put some double sided tape on the back side. I'll remove the release paper and adhere it to the right of the floral die cut piece. For a final finishing touch, I'll add a few of the clear crystals from Paper Rose. I'll put three in the upper right hand corner and two in the lower left hand corner. I'm adding just a small drop of Barely Art glue and using an embellishment wand to pick up those crystals and pressing them in place. And the glue will dry clear. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. For card design number two, the card sketch is from Cards TV. This is sketch number 10. With so many beautiful pattern papers in the collection, I thought this would be a perfect sketch to feature four different patterns on one card. I selected two of the busier designs and then two watercolor designs. And I'm adding all of those rectangles onto some white shimmer cardstock and I'll be layering it onto some dark purple cardstock. I think this would also be a fun sketch to use the same pattern in the background and it's also perfect when you're down to just some small pattern paper scraps that you want to finish off. When selecting the designs for those rectangles, I tried to balance it out with the two busy patterns and the two watercolor patterns. I think it would work well with all busy designs or all tone on tone watercolor patterns. But I think it would look off balance if there were three busy patterns and just one muted or tone on tone pattern. And adding those similar patterns to the card diagonal from each other really adds a nice balance to the card. Next, I'll add a stitch circle die cut. And I did add some purple ink splatter to the background, just for a little extra color to go around the die cut image. This card will be featuring one of the beautiful embossed cut aparts. And I did put foam dimension on the back. The sentiment is another cut apart. It's not embossed. It's from Paper Rose's All Occasion Sentiment Cut Apart Sheets. Before adhering it to the card, I will put a scrap piece of cardstock just on the right side. Since the left side will be sitting on top of that circle, I want to keep it nice and level. And I did cut the right side of the sentiment at an angle for some extra interest. Using the same dark purple cardstock, I'll cut a small banner and adhere it in the upper left hand corner. So there is my finished card and this time I made a total of four. Since I selected the four sheets for those background pieces, it was easy to create three more cards. And I simply selected different embossed and die cut pieces for the image. For card design number three, the card sketch is from Freshly Made Sketches. This is number 426. I selected another watercolor pattern for the background, adding a strip of a beautiful floral paper toward the bottom of the card. And I did layer both of those pieces on some burgundy. It's almost more of a mulberry cardstock color. I'm not sure of the brand or the name since it's not labeled. Some of the cardstock in my craft room has been around for over 10 years. I'll put some ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Now on the card sketch, it indicates a circle. I'll be changing that to an oval since I want to fit one of the die cut pieces. I use Paper Rose's scallop oval frames to cut out a black frame. Then with their stitched oval dies, I cut out a vellum oval and I made sure it was large enough to fit on the back of the oval frame. On the back of the scallop oval frame, I'll put some glue, then adhere the vellum oval. The two ovals aren't the exact same shape, but it doesn't matter since you won't see that back side. Now I'll add one of the die cut pieces and I did put foam dimension on the back and I'll adhere it toward the bottom of the oval more on the right side. Then I can flip over the scallop oval frame, put glue on the back of the frame and the image. That way none of the glue will show through on the vellum. Then I'll adhere that to the card. For a sentiment, I'm adding another embossed cut apart. This is happy birthday. 
Before adhering it to the card, I did put a scrap cardstock piece just on the lower portion since the top will be sitting on that cardstock layer. For a final finishing touch, I'm adding a few glitter stickers, and this is something from my stash that I've had for years and years. So there is my finished card, and this time I made a total of two. For card design number four, the card sketch is from Freshly Made Sketches. This is sketch number 34. I'm using some craft cardstock for the background and selected three different pattern papers. I'll be layering two of those pieces and the background on some dark purple cardstock. The pattern with the largest design will be that narrow strip toward the bottom of the card, and I decided not to layer that. I think it stands out enough against that craft cardstock. I'll adhere that strip down first. Then I'll add the smaller design pattern paper with all the leaves in the upper right hand corner. I'll have the very bottom of that piece sit directly on top of that strip going across the card. Then I'll add the purple watercolor paper next. And I am adding a small scrap piece of pattern paper and cardstock on the very left side before adhering it down. That way it stays nice and level and the very left side doesn't dip down. And the very bottom of that piece is also sitting on the very top of the wider strip going across the card. For the narrow strip going across the card, I'm using the same dark purple cardstock, and I did put some double-sided tape on the back side to adhere that in place. I'll flip this piece over, layer it on some purple cardstock, and for this card, that cardstock layer is an additional fourth of an inch. Most of the time I add an additional eighth of an inch, but I decided for this card to have a wider cardstock border. This card will be featuring one of the beautiful floral designs with that watercolor wash behind it, and it's the piece that I cut out using a stitched oval die. I am adding a couple of scrap cardstock pieces to keep that oval nice and level. And I'll adhere to the card using some glue. This is another card where I switched out the circle that's indicated on the sketch and changed it to an oval. For a sentiment, this is another embossed cut apart. It's hello there. And I did put a small piece of foam dimension on the left side before adhering it onto that oval. For a final finishing touch, I'm adding three small purple pearls in the upper right hand corner. I'll add just a small drop of Barely Art glue, pick them up using an embellishment wand and press them in place. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. For card design number five, the card sketch is from Cards TV. This is sketch number 20. For the background of the card, I'm using this leaf or vine pattern paper, and I'll be layering it on some dark green cardstock. For the image box, I have some white cardstock, and I'll layer it on the same dark green cardstock. For the two strips toward the bottom of the card, the very bottom strip, I'm using the same dark green cardstock as all those layers. And the top one, which is a little bit wider, I'm using a lighter green cardstock. I'll put some ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. Then I'll put glue on the back of the image box and adhere that to my card. This card will be featuring several of the embossed cut apart pieces. I really wanted to make sure to use some of the beautiful vases. Before adhering the vase down, I'll first glue down the branches. Then I'll put glue on the back and adhere the vase in place. I also have three of the floral blooms. I'll just glue all of those down, starting with the purple one on the left, the light pink on the right, and the smaller reddish pink toward the bottom on the left side. With all the different cut apart pieces included in the pack, you can have a wide variety of different floral arrangements. This would look lovely popped up with some foam dimension, but I decided just to glue all those pieces down. Once I have all of my flowers adhered in place, I can add the sentiment, and this is another embossed cut apart with heartfelt sympathy. I do have some double-sided adhesive tape on the back. Just remove the release paper and adhere the sentiment underneath the image panel. 
Then for a final finishing touch, I'll add some enamel dots following the design of the card sketch. Selected this lovely green. In the bottom right hand corner, I'm adding the largest and also the medium size. And in the upper left hand corner, I'll add two of the smallest size. They do have adhesive on the back, but I'm also adding just a small drop of glue just to make sure they stay in place. I find that sometimes embellishments do pop off if you don't add a little extra adhesive. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. The other card features different embossed cut apart pieces and a different sentiment. For card design number six, I won't be using a card sketch. I selected this lovely floral paper for the background and I also have a wide strip of the pink watercolor paper. I'll layer the background on some of the mulberry cardstock. Then I'll add that watercolor panel across the middle of the card, put some ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. This is a very simple card design. I really wanted to feature the other images with that watercolor background. I'm layering the image on the same mulberry cardstock and I'll adhere that panel toward the left side of the card. The sentiment is one of the die cut pieces and I did put foam dimension on the back. I'll remove the release paper and adhere the sentiment to the right of that beautiful image. Using the same cardstock color, I'll cut a banner and add it in the upper right hand corner. And I just use my scissors to cut the banner. I first cut a small slit in the middle for the fishtail. Then I cut the right side slightly at an angle, flip over that piece and do the same thing on the other side. Then I'll adhere it in place using some glue. Then to finish off the card, I'll add some red gem stickers. Put two on the banner and three in the lower left hand corner. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. For card design number seven, the card sketch is from MFT. This is number 537. I selected this fun pattern paper for the background that has leaves, pomegranates, and I think they're figs. For the narrow strip that goes across the card, I'm using some of the purple watercolor paper. Then using a stitched oval die, I cut out another watercolor paper. And I already have the right side of that oval cut off since it'll be flush on the right side of the card. I'll layer the background piece on some dark purple cardstock. And now I'll bring out several of the embossed cut aparts and also a couple of the die cut pieces. The leafy branches are the die cut pieces. It's nice that the embossed cut aparts and the die cut packs work well together. I'll adhere those down first, just holding the vase in place so I can get placement correct. Then I'll glue down the vase and add the flowers. I have a large red bloom, a lighter, sort of a mink color and a purple flower. And I'll also be adding this small floral cluster in the lower right hand corner. The sentiment is one of the die cut pieces. This is happy birthday and I'll adhere that down using some glue. Decided to keep this card nice and flat. It's always good to have a few cards on hand that don't have all that extra dimension. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. For card design number eight, and this is my final card design, I don't have any full sheets of pattern paper left at this point, but I do have a few strips of this pink watercolor paper, and it's enough that I can make it look like I have a full panel. I'll add the wider piece toward the top, a narrow strip at the bottom. I do have a gap of the cardstock showing, but I will be covering that up. I'll put some ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Next, I'll add two strips of pattern paper. One has lovely floral images and the other is mostly a green watercolor design. You can see there is a small pattern on the left side, but I'll be covering that up. This card will be featuring one of the large floral images and this is one of the embossed cut aparts. I'll adhere it onto a vellum oval. First, I'll glue down that cut apart, flip over the oval and add adhesive just on the back side of that image. Then I'll adhere it on the left side of the card. So now you can see where I covered up that small floral image that was on that green strip. 
For our sentiment, I'm using another die cut piece and I did pop it up using some foam dimension. This is happy birthday. Then to finish off the card, I'll add some more of the glitter stickers. Put three around the sentiment on the right side. And I keep changing my mind on the placement. So I am laying them on there lightly so I'll be able to move them around, which is good because I moved them around several times and luckily didn't rip any of the paper. When I finally decide on a placement, I'll put a small drop of glue underneath each of the stickers. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. The other card features a vase and some of the large blooms and the sentiment smile. Now here's another look at the 18 cards I made using Paper Rose Studios Mediterranean Summer Collection. I used the 6x6 paper pad, the coordinating die cut pack, and also the coordinating embossed cut apart pack. This is a beautiful collection. I love the colors and designs. And the embossed cut apart pieces are absolutely stunning. They add such a lovely detail to your card or project. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. Paper Rose is based in Australia and they do ship internationally, but you can also purchase their products here in the US and I have links for both locations in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.